presents College Football Today. From Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, we've got a matchup today of classic proportions between the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, the Wolverines of Michigan. A look down from the Goodyear Blimp America, carrying our ABC Sports camera onto Michigan Stadium. They were guessing the crowd would be in the neighborhood of 105,000 today. All the seats are gone, and there are a lot of folks who wish they had uh, made plans earlier. Now, Notre Dame won the toss. The Fighting Irish will receive the football. We have had the meeting out in the center of the field. After the 1978 season, Michigan with a 10 and 2 record, ranked fifth in AP and UPI polls. Fighting Irish with their victory in the Cotton Bowl, 9 and 3 record, tied for sixth in the UPI poll. The temperature this afternoon, 65 degrees. The wind is out of the west and it swirls around down on the bottom of this great huge bowl at about 12 to 15 miles an hour. Michigan with one win on 1979, a 49 to 7 romp over Northwestern last week. And even the Michigan coaches admitted that their people were not stretched out at all in that particular football game. But at the same time, they also feel that they are going to be stretched before this day is done. Right now, let's spend a moment with our colleague Bill Fleming to bring you up to date on what's happening elsewhere. And time for a quick score here, Keith. Minnesota leading Ohio State 14 to 7 in the second quarter in that one. Minnesota jumped off to a 14 to nothing lead and the Buckeyes are fighting back. But now we're ready to see it up here. We suggested a few moments ago that the Big Ten might have five teams that could play with anybody on a given Saturday. And it appears that is the case. That would, however, go in the book I'm sure in most people's minds as a considered upset if Minnesota should win that football game. It will be Ali Haji Sheik, a freshman out of Arlington, Texas. He was born here in Ann Arbor. He grew up down in the Fort Worth area. We're kicking to number 12, Ty Barber, at the top of the screen. Number 42, Jim Stone, at the bottom of the screen. We're on artificial surface, and here we go. It goes to Barber. He caught it at about the nine-yard line, and he breaks, almost breaks it out. He comes back out across the 30-yard line where Stu Harris, a defensive back, brings him down. The Fighting Irish will send out this alignment. Rusty Lish, at quarterback, a senior from Belleville, Illinois. He's uh, getting his big chance now to lead him this season. Vegas Ferguson, the young man Frank Broyles mentioned. John Sweeney is a freshman, and he's in at fullback because Pete Buchanan is hurt. Pete Holohan is the flanker, and Dave Condini is the wide receiver. The referee is Rich McVeigh, and he's asked for a new football. Out comes the ball. And the umpire is Russ Kemper, the head linesman Art White, John Nalen is the line judge, Larry Nimmers is the field judge, and Tom Klein is the back judge. So here's your first play of the ball game. And the Irish come out in a spread formation with one remaining back. Now they go back into a setup which offers Vegas Ferguson in the tailback position. Now they move the tight end into what amounts to an eye formation. Now after all of that fiddling around, they give it to Ferguson, he runs it over right guard. And he moves it from the 36 out to the 40 for four yards. Ron Simpkins, number 40 for Michigan, linebacker, made the tackle, and I suspect we'll call Mr. Simpkins' name a lot today. Simpkins was uh, all Big Ten last year, 168 tackles. You see him take on the blocker, but he has the agility and the strength to still reach over and make the tackle on Ferguson. It is second down, and... Well, they give him a better part of seven yards on that carry, almost to the 42-yard line. So call it second down and four. As Lish goes to throw, has great protection. The pass is completed to number 85, Tony Hunter, in at the wide receiver position. And the Fighting Irish have a first down inside the Michigan 30-yard line. What a great executed play that was. Watch it from the end zone. You'll see Lish drop back. He was looking for his tight end, Matzik. He was covered by the linebackers. You can see him. And finally, he reloads, which is the mark of a good quarterback, and finds the freshman, the outstanding player from Cincinnati, open for a big game. What a big confidence build of that particular play was. 39-yard pickup, first down, Notre Dame, Michigan, 27-yard line. Lish turns, gives to Ferguson. Ferguson breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. He spun down, however, at the 23-yard line and a penalty flag on the field. Ron Simpkins again up to pop the ball carrier. And uh, we have an Irishman shaken up. Up front, it's Martinovich at tackle. Leon at guard for the Fighting Irish. Scully is the center. 
Tim Huffman is the other guard, and it's Huffman, the man down on the field right now for Notre Dame. Tim Foley, a tri-captain, is a tackle, and the tight end is a sophomore, Dean Maztec. So time is out on the field for the injured player, Tim Huffman, who appears to be getting up now under his own power. We'll be back with more in Ann Arbor in a moment. Started quarterback. Dickey is a junior from Ottawa, Ohio. Stan Edwards will be your tailback, a 205-pounder. Lawrence Reed is the fullback at 223. Ralph Clayton at 6'3", 225 is the wingback. And Alan Mitchell at 6'1", 184 is the wide receiver. So here we go now with B.J. Dickey pulling the trigger for the first time. And Michigan with a man way wide to the left side. They've got Clayton down the tight side. The ball is handed off to the tailback. Dan Edwards and Edwards getting pretty good blocking comes up across the 20 out to about the 22 yard line. The offensive front for the Michigan Wolverines and that is some question because they've got a couple of big guys hurt. Ed Muransky is at one tackle 266. Kurt Becker at 244 is a guard. George Lilja is a 249 center. John Arbesnik 243 guard and Mike Leone at 255. And the tight end is Doug Marsh. He's a 235 pounder. It'll be second down, and let's call it four yards to go for Michigan. The ball is handed off to the fullback. And Lawrence Reed, a 223 pounder, bangs it in there, trying for the first down yardage, and he's close. The defensive alignment for the Fighting Irish John Hankard, Pat Kramer, Kevin Griffith, and Joe Gramke. They're young up front. Junior, sophomore, sophomore, and sophomore. The linebackers are Whitting Table and Leopold, senior, sophomore, and senior. The defensive backfield of Waymer, Krim, Sichi, and Gibbons. They are senior, sophomore, junior, and sophomore, so they are young on defense, and the chains are out. Dan Devine feels that the key to his success today will be keeping the football because his defense is so inexperienced, he wants to keep them on the bench as much as possible. So you see the successful measurement for Michigan, Bo Beckler on the sidelines, and he's been a bit touchy all week as he is prepared for the ball game because he says it's the biggest non-conference game they're going to play. When you play Notre Dame, that's the way you feel. Football is at the 26-yard line. First down for Michigan. Come on, <laughs> Dickey has the ball, turns it upfield, and a big hole in the middle of the line. So once again, Michigan shows a quarterback unafraid to pull it down and stick his head in the middle. He goes to the 32. He picked up six yards, tackled by Mike Whittington. Keith, that particular pass, uh, run, is an option. He can throw the ball to the wide receiver if the cornerback charges across and forces the run. That particular play, the cornerback stayed back, and Dickey kept it for a nice game. Anthony Carter in the ball game, and he is the wide man out of the picture. And to the open side of the field, Dickey looking for it, throws it for the short man, a pass caught by Doug Marsh, the tight end, and Marsh has a first down at the Notre Dame 47-yard line. 21-yard pickup and a heck of a catch by Marsh. A sensational catch. Tom Gibbons, the safety man, gambled by coming underneath the close shoulder. We're going to watch this. It's a bootleg pass pattern, running play action. The first choice were covered. He looks back and turns up and finds Marsh. Watch Gibbons come in front. He should be taught to go through the back shoulder. Then if he misses the ball, he collisions the receiver. Just inside the Fighting Irish, 47, first down Michigan. Quarterback Dickey keeps the ball. He's got a lot of real estate to run on. He runs it inside the 35. He's down to the 33-yard line before Dave Waymer from Charlotte, North Carolina, can bring him down 13 yards, first down, Wolves are moving. That was the new wrinkle that both Jim Beckler shared with me yesterday. Lining up in the high formation, Clayton right, uh, right behind, front of the fullback, going in quick motion and running the option play, first one side or the other. Notre Dame did not adjust. Big play the result. Into the defense for Notre Dame, Mark Saya, big junior out of Lewiston, New York, and Jay Case, a senior out of Cincinnati. They're both gimpy. But right now, the Irish defense needs them. And they're big and strong, and they're in there. And Clayton turns up field. He turns a little early, got away with it. Meantime, Lawrence Reed, the fullback, blows it over the left side. Behind our Besnick, Lilja, and Leone. Gibbons finally brings him down, but he goes for 12 more yards. And the Wolverines have it first down at the Notre Dame 21. Bo Schimbeck that told me he was opening up his offense, and I believe it. Keith, there, he, he's thrown on first down. He's run up the middle once, run wide twice, came back with a trap right up the middle. Good statement calling, keeping the defense off balance. Edwards, 
the tailback has it. Spins away from one man behind the line of scrimmage and gets inside the 15 to the 14. He paced himself pretty well. He got a lot of defensive pressure behind the line of scrimmage, and Saya couldn't quite get his shirt tail. Now going into the lineup will be Anthony Carter for the Michigan Wolverines. Scott Zedek is also in the lineup, and he's another gimpy Notre Dame defensive player. So Dan Devine going to the guys that he really, with the experience of the bolt, trying to set up a goal line defensive situation and stop Michigan. It is second down from the 14-yard line. And the tailback pays the price as he tries to punch it over the left side with Zedek, big junior out of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, and Bobby Leopold hitting him. There's the time remaining in the first quarter of play at Michigan. Beginning to move the football against the Fighting Irish. Mitchell comes back in at a wide receiver spot, and Carter comes out. The temperature, about 65 degrees as we started the ball game today. 13-yard line of Notre Dame. It'll be third down and a long two. Dickey on a roll, and he throws to the corner, and it is incomplete. Going way high in the air. Was Doug Marsh the tight end? Nope. Make it the other fella, Alan Mitchell, the wide receiver. Mitchell had curled and come across in through the secondary, and the pass was too high for him, and he couldn't come down with it. So in to do some kicking now will be number two, Brian Virgil. Out of Tony Jackson's hold, it is a 30-yard field goal attempt. And he didn't get a whole lot of it. But it is good. And so at 7.31 to go in the first quarter of play, Michigan gets on the scoreboard first to take a 3-0 lead over the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. About six minutes to go in that first half, Keith. All right, Bill, that Utah State team was involved in a 48-48 tie with San Jose last week. That's the highest-scoring tie football game in college football history, I guess, in 111 years <laughs> anybody can find. I don't want to coach in any game like that. Oh, Lordy. Here's the kickoff now. As Haji Sheik hits it deep, and he drills it way back into the end zone. But Ty Barber's going to come out with it. With Michigan leading by a score of 3 0. Barber, hard runner, gets it out to the 23 before the kicker, Haji Sheik, brings him down. So now here's Notre Dame with an opportunity to move the ball one more time. And as Frank Broyles told you a little while ago, it's Dan Devine's hope that his offense can sit on the ball because he feels that Michigan will have the tools to exploit a young Notre Dame defense. And we saw Devine have to go to some gimpy players trying to stall Michigan, and they held him away from the touchdown. Here's Lish now, first down from the 23. Gives to Vegas Ferguson, and Ferguson is cut down by Canavino as he turns the corner right at the line of scrimmage. Keith, it's amazing how penalties can turn a game around. Notre Dame was threatening to score, got a 15-yard penalty, had to punt, lost a little momentum, Michigan came in and moved 86 yards for the field goal, averaging nine yards to try on first down, and let's give credit to that offensive line that Bull was worried about. <laughs> yeah, some worry, some problem. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be second down and 10, and once again, Ferguson has it, comes over the top on the right side, gets two yards. Before you stacked up and down in the bottom of that file, you'll find Ron Simpkins and the middle guard, Mike Turgovac, and those are other scores with Army over Connecticut 9-3 at halftime. Navy leading the Citadel, 13-0 at halftime. Opener for the middies. Georgia, Wake Forest, pretty good ball game. Third quarter, 21-13 in Syracuse. Losing last week at Ohio State, rebounding against West Virginia. It'll be third down for the Fighting Irish. They need eight yards from their own 25. Runs it out across the 30 to about the 32. He's going to be short of his first down. It's Pergovac, number 77, a senior out of Austintown, Ohio, finally brought him down. Looks to me like he's a little short. I believe he is, Keith. Uh, uh, Devine, uh, Devine was worried about the blitz of the Michigan defense against the quarterback uh, Lee's playing his first game, and uh, they had it on that time. All right, here comes the Fighting Irish punt. Let's see whether or not Bushka will kick this one to Anthony Carter. Carter broke one last week, 78 yards. There he is. He's a freshman. He doesn't know how to run straight. He didn't <laughs> run a straight line if his life depended on him, but he can flat fly. Kick is away. It's a low liner. It's going to give him a little room. He's got it cleanly at the 24. <laughs> oh, 
Now the ball got loose. Notre Dame's got it. 36-yard line. So Carter flying off, looking for some daylight after a 44-yard punt. Picked up 11 yards, went down hard. The ball came loose. The Fighting Irish recovered it. He's so interested in scoring, he didn't protect the football. It was knocked loose with the headgear. You wonder why a coach uses a freshman there. He's the most talented player probably in America last year. Outside the 35-yard line, first down. Handoff goes to Ferguson. In over the middle he goes. Canavino is there, and so is Dale Kites and Mel Owens. Good first down yard is there, Keith. In a critical situation. They need to get some points here. Just short of the 31. Got the better part of five. Other scores with Michigan State. Oregon's given the Spartans a pretty good ball game. Oregon a big one the last week over Colorado. Call it second down a little more than five from the 31. Ferguson again. And Vegas wiggles in there. Not a whole lot of daylight. He just kept on ramming and... He's just short of his first down as Simpkins and Canavino, the inside linebackers, make the stop. Michigan defense is stacked inside, uh, Keith, knowing that the Notre Dame does not run option plays. You don't have to worry about an outside game for Rue. Vegas Ferguson is the only Irish back to carry the ball so far. Fullback John Sweeney, the freshman, has not seen it. Ferguson's got it again. He gets first down. As he breaks it over the left side, he got a good block from Martinovich to seal off the left side of the line. He popped it through. And here's Notre Dame now, first down at about the Michigan 24-yard line. The young freshman Sweeney is doing a good job of blocking for Ferguson, but Ferguson's going to be a tired cookie if he keeps carrying the ball this many times. Well, they like him on the artificial surface. He does very well on it. They believe he plays better on artificial surface. Hollihan comes wide to the left side. He's carried nine times, gained 33 yards. And he's got it again. And he gets a couple before he is cut down. Three minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first quarter. Michigan sitting on a three to nothing lead. Notre Dame had the ball and was moving it well until the 15 yard penalty knocked him down. Michigan came back to its field goal, a 30 yarder. The ball is at the 22, second down and eight. This time, the Wolverines get him behind the line of scrimmage. Curtis Greer, 95, one of the quickest defensive tackles in the country. Got a little help from the Wolfman, Screw Harris, that time. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. A third down, rather. Here's a look at Curtis Greer, Frank. Greer has already made, earned all Big Ten honors. He slants to the inside, avoids all the blockers, and makes the first contact and slows Ferguson down. Michigan Keith has a habit of blitzing in this part on this part of the field and they did on both these first downs. Third down and about nine from the 23. This stand up, bang bang pass is incomplete intended for the flanker Pete Hollihan. Hollihan was hit by Mike Jolly just about the time the ball got there. So a good play by Jolly and now it is fourth down for the Fighting Irish. I'm a little bit surprised by the signal call, and I think he changed most of those plays to the line of scrimmage when he saw the blitz coming off by Michigan. Chuck Bale, 40-yard field goal attempt. He led it from the 30. He was three out of five last year between 40 and 49. He's got plenty of leg on it. It's good. And we're all even with 2.27 to go in the first quarter of play. Game for the Michigan Wolverines. Ron Simpkins, incidentally, number 40, linebacker for Michigan, needs five more tackles to become the all-time leading tackler in Wolverine history, and there have been some quality people wear the maize and blue over the years. He's played with great consistency, Keith. He, in 1977, he had 174 tackles and 168 last year. That's the kind of linebacker all of us are looking for. Iowa, there's Missouri and Illinois with the Missouri. That's a good ball game. Look at that. Missouri has came big in the fourth quarter last week to overcome San Diego State. Pittsburgh out to a big lead over Kansas. Chuck Mayo kicks off. 
And he kicks it out of the end zone. Goodbye. So we'll come back to the 20-yard line where it'll be first down for Michigan. They had Stanley Edwards and uh, Anthony Carter back in the end zone, but Mayo did not give them a chance. Foley felt it was psychologically advantage to kick it out of the end zone after he puts the points on the scoreboard, disallowing any opportunity for a run back. There's Bo. And he's looking at his offense now as B.J. Dickey will come out with Stanley Edwards, Lawrence Reed, Ralph Clayton, and you've got Zedek, Case, and Saya in there defensively for the Fighting Irish. They offer a three-man front right now. Now the linebackers move up to plug the outside positions, and they go outside with it as the quarterback, Dickey, reading the play well. Notre Dame's outside people a little bit slow getting up, and he took advantage of it and picked up 12 yards in the first down. Keith, that is what Bo is depending upon this year, his new wrinkle. He's got a motion going either direction with Clayton changing the strength of the offense and before the defense can adjust. Notre Dame cannot adjust on that particular option play. What you have it amounts to now they move a fourth man up on the defensive front. So again, Notre Dame's changed his defense. And a handoff is to Reed the fullback. And the big fella has got a couple of yards, and that's all. Middle linebacker Bob Crable is a sophomore out of Cincinnati. Let's have a look at him. Crable played a great deal last year, but had great credentials coming from Cincinnati, Ohio. Fine play, fills the hole on a trap play, read it perfectly. And it's second down and eight for the Wolverines, the football sitting at their own 34-yard line and a 3-3 tie with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Dickey back looking for the home run man. Can't find him. Drops it off instead to the tailback Edwards. And Edwards runs it out across the 45 to the 46. First down, Wolverine. That does not look like a Bo Schimbeckler <laughs> offense, does it? He told me, he says, Frank, I'm going to throw an early downs. And this is a really just an in run, pitching the ball out. It's a screen pass under the new rules, Keith. We can block downfield in college while the ball's in the air. That's exactly what took place. Number 83 kicked out on the cornerback, and you can watch Edwards make a very fine run in the key first down. Two out of three for Dickey in the air, 33 yards. First down, Wolverines call up the 45. Dickey flips the ball to Stanley Edwards, the tailback. He's in some trouble, but he turns it back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Joe Gramke, number 92, defensive right end, was the man who penetrated. He is also a sophomore out of Cincinnati. They produce some good football players out of Cincinnati area. Mola High School, I guess, is the most famous of them all in Cincinnati. Yeah, and there's some others that are turning them out now, too. You know, they're getting tired of Mola beating up on them, I think. <laughs> but Mola has at least 10 football players on these two squads. Yeah. That's just incredible. It really is. And they, they come in as freshmen and they play for them, too. <laughs> all right, let's say second down and 10 as Dickey sets up to throw it. He throws it over the middle. Mitchell at the 40. First down, Michigan, Notre Dame, 40. That's a 15-yard pickup. <laughs> How about that first down pass? And it's a beautiful time pass because the receiver is coming right in the middle. And you see Mitchell jump and catch it. First quarter's over. Score is 3-3 after one. The ball on the cut inside the tackle and picks up three or four or five yards instead of loss. But he looks good throwing. He looks good running. Good judgment on both, and that's important for this Michigan football team. They need for him to come through. He's carried the ball four times, averaged nine yards per carry. Pretty good for a quarterback. Uh, even good for you. Uh, <laughs> we get <gave> a play. <laughs> Carter White. Dickey looking for him. Throws high. Had him in the seam, missed him. First quarter numbers look like this. A lot of offense by Michigan. Seven first downs to two for Notre Dame. The long drive that Michigan had, 86 yards for three points, score three to three. About even in the time of possession. The messengers for Bo Beckler are the wide receivers, split ends, Carter and Mitchell. Mitchell is in now. Third down to five. Give it to the tailback, Edwards. 
He's determined he's got the first down at the Fighting Irish 28, Steve Cicci, sophomore, Fargo, North Dakota, brought him down. That was an outstanding run. Edwards started the Rose Bowl game as a freshman and rushed for about 75 yards in that particular ball game. Redshirted last year with an injury, but very talented in speed and size. Ball is just short of the 28 of Notre Dame. First down, Michigan. 3-3, the score. Edwards. And the tailback runs it to about the 23 before the Irish get him. Got a good block from Kurt Becker and from his fullback, Lawrence Reed, to get him in the hole. I think we ought to pay tribute to Reed on all of these plays that Edwards is carrying the ball. He is the key blocker, and he's been knocking Notre Dame linemen down and linebackers on every play. So far, the only man to carry the ball for Notre Dame has been uh, the tailback, Vegas Ferguson. Their fullback, Sweeney, the freshman, hasn't seen it yet. Double wide left side. Mitchell and Clayton both coming to the open side of the field. On second down at about five, give it back to Edwards, blows it up the middle. First down as he fights to the 10-yard line. Boy, the middle of that Michigan offensive front opened a heck of a hole. Notre Dame's linebackers peeled out of there. Lil Becker and Arbesnik had their own way. Let's look at it again. You can see the blocking by the left side of the Michigan line. Fullback Reed blocks him, and Edwards runs north and south. In this part of the field, you don't run east and west. You run north and south and get all the yardage you can. Stanley now with seven carries, 40 yards. Gained 13 on that one. Ball is a half a yard short of the 10-yard line. First down, Michigan. Dickey going down the line. He's got some room, but he is cut down by number 27, Tom Gibbons coming up from a free safety spot. Gibbons misses him, he's gone. They moved Gibbons to free safety because of his tackling ability, and you, that sounds funny to say that a safety has to be a good tackler, but free safety has to support inside on the option to play at the line of scrimmage. Gibbons did that on that play. Clayton has come out of the ball game right now for Michigan. The football is at the Notre Dame seven yard line. It'll be second down. They can get a first down without scoring. Mitchell is the man in motion. Penalty flags are thrown, and we've got too much time called against Michigan. Keith, that's too bad, but one of the things that prevents all college coaches from using motion and formations is that we only have 25 seconds to get the ball in play, and professional teams have 30 seconds. That extra five seconds allows the pros to stem and shift and put men in motion, and it's a gamble on offense. It's good. Its advantages are known to all coaches, and Michigan is really doing a good job with it, except on that play. Yeah, but you don't have as much of the 25 seconds this year under the rules that you had previously either, because the minute that referee signals go, the clock starts. Clayton back in. Dickey stands up to throw the ball. He's going to go for Clayton, and he can't get it. He overthrew it. He was not open. There were two Irish defenders right in front of him, and... Uh, Dickey did the right thing. He threw the ball in the crowd. He certainly did. Get rid of the ball. Don't take the loss. Loss yardage is one of the most demoralizing factors in college football. But penalties change your offensive strategy. Instead of being able to run the ball in for a touchdown on second down and seven, now they've got second down and 12. They had to throw. You change the game plan completely. It's the 12th play coming up in this possession by Michigan. They started back on their own 20-yard line. And it's third down. Those are the ball just touching the 12-yard line. Carter in motion. Dickey. Another one. Stopped by a whistle, and that's again too much time called against the Wolverines. Okay, now you watch the referee. When he brings that ball and puts it down, he'll wind up the clock. He starts his, he drops his hand, and the black judge punches his clock, and they have 25 seconds to get in play. Now, some teams that use men in motion signal the plays in Keith rather than substitute they takes a little bit longer to substitute if you're going to use man in motion and shift now the clock is running here to four the clock used to start on the snap of the ball now it goes they don't call time out they're going to get another one better hurry football is back at the 17 yard line and Dickey back to throw gets a little pressure but he's loose you may have it. Not quite. 
They get him just short. But he may have a first down. Time called by the referee. Ball is very near the goal line. And Tom Gibbons saved the touchdown. Well, they'll have a look to see whether or not they have the first down. I don't see any flags anywhere. And here come the chains. While the chains are coming in, this program a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. All right. Here's the chain stretched out. Keith, just short. That was a little bit of shades of Ricky Lee. In this game last year, he turned it around scrambling on third and long and making the first down. That is the mark of a great quarterback. Here it is, all of his receivers, Dickie's receivers are covered. You scramble right up the middle and his quickness allows him to break in the secondary, runs north and south and gets right to the goal line. Boy, is that a difference. They're gonna go for the six. Three, three ball game, couple of inches short of the first down, less than a yard short of the goal line. Put it in, goal line defense, digging in, give it to Edwards, running for the corner, got it! Well, I'll tell you right now, sitting up here where I'm sitting, I didn't expect that kind of a play on fourth down. I was going to say the same thing. That shocked even Notre Dame to run a delayed play. Here it is, but you see the effort right here. Watch Edwards, short of the goal line, pick up his feet like a good runner, and then dive over the goal line for the touchdown. Pure determination, the result, touchdown. Crable, the middle linebacker, the man that just missed him for Notre Dame. And there's a roll of confetti. That's the uh, hmm, kind word out on the field, so they'll get it off of there. That particular play was introduced to college football by Nebraska, Keith. You've seen it many, many times, but not on the goal line. No, you're right. <laughs> At 10.48 to go in the first half, Virgil's kick is good. And so that's where we are. The Wolverines of Michigan lead Notre Dame by a score of 10 to 3. Going to dance and why not? Their team sitting on a 10-3 lead as the Wolverines go 80 yards in how many plays, Frank? Oh, 14 plays, Keith, and it was a tremendous drive in the... They threw on first down, they ran up the middle, they ran the auction, but it still boiled down to a long yards third down. They scrambled and made it. Ali Hajishi kicks off for Michigan. And the ball goes to Jim Stone. First time Jim's seen it today. And the junior out of Seattle, Washington, comes up across the 32, near the 32. I suspect we may see him in the backfield for Notre Dame before we go too much deeper into the ball game. So far, the only ball carrier that we've had for the Fighting Irish has been uh, Vegas Ferguson and John Sweeney, the freshman, 220-pounder out of Deerfield, is back in at fullback. He's been the blocking back so far. Ferguson will be the tailback. And Rusty Lish, the quarterback. Pete Hollihan is the wide man, number 31. Kobe Hunter, wide to the top side of the picture. And here's the pass to the sidelines for Hunter. And it's caught. Oh, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Caught the ball out of bounds. But I want to tell you something. That's worth seeing again because that kid really put a move on the Michigan defender over there as he went around in the air and came down and running. That's a sensational pattern by the freshman. He's uh, from Cincinnati. Watch him go around number 28, Brayman, and you're going to see Harden come in the picture right here, but the concentration, watch the freshman's concentration as he controls the ball and comes down with his left foot out of bounds. Well, he knew what he was doing, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's real concentration for a freshman. He called 35 passes last year. 11 touchdowns. Second down and 10 from the 31-yard line. Lish will put it up. Dumps it off to Vegas Ferguson. Good move by Ferguson. Back to the inside. What was almost no gain or even a loss has turned into about a four-yard pickup. Ben Needham was the man hunting the Irish quarterback, Rusty Lish. He got there just a fraction late. First down story is revealing. 10 to two. You, Michigan with an 80-yard drive and an 86-yard drive for a field goal and a touchdown shows a lot of confidence for their offensive team. Third down, 8-6. Lish gets his pass off. The pass is caught 
by number 86, Dean Mastak, a sophomore out of Toledo at the 39-yard line. That is short of the first down. Here's Bill Fleming. After Ohio State trailed by the score of 14 to 7, Minnesota with seven seconds to go in that first half got a field goal by Rogan. It is now Minnesota 17, Ohio State 7, a shocker at halftime. All right. Bushka will punt it for the Fighting Irish. Anthony Carter is the deep man for Michigan. That's a good looking punt, but it's low and long, and it gives Carter some room. <laughs> I'll tell you, he'll flat scare you to death if you're looking from the other side of the field. The ball's out at the 34-yard line, 9-12 to go for numbers on Bo Shim Beckler in his career and at Michigan. His team leads by a score of 10-3 with 9-12 to go in the first half. There's Dan Devine across the way, Dan in the last year of a five-year contract. Notre Dame sends a five-man front up now with Dickey at quarterback, same backfield for Michigan. Dickey still has it. He gets it downfield, and the pass is incomplete. Al Clayton had it in his hands and on his numbers and didn't come down with it. It's a good choice by Dickey. The first two choice of his primary targets were covered. He turned back, and he didn't quite turn his chest around to hit uh, Clayton accurately. He was a little bit behind him, and he dropped it. Passing on first down again, Keith. Anchored Kramer, Griffith, and Gramke are the up-front men for the Fighting Irish defense. Second and ten. Dickey to put it up. This time, the Irish get in. Ball comes loose. Notre Dame covers it at the Michigan for a 39-yard line. Second fumble on the ball. John Hankard, number 47. Keith, when a quarterback scrambles, that's something that Dickey will have to learn. When you scramble, you're going to get hit from the side, and you've got to protect the ball. Even though, let's watch it again, and watch where he has the ball in his hands to, and see how it gets pulled out. Right from behind, he was hit by, I guess, by Crable back there. Gramsci, I think it was, hit him. John Gramsci. Here we go now, Notre Dame's ball, first down at the Michigan 39-yard line. The Irish making the break for themselves. Ball is fixed out. They're going to break Ferguson in half. <laughs> Boy, that hard yardage. Ferguson remains the only ball carrier for Notre Dame. He's carried 12 times for 40 yards. He's still doing a good job. He was hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain and just ran through arms determined and picked up six or seven. Ball is at the 33. Second down and a short four. Ferguson again. And he's at the 30. That'll be a yard, maybe a little more than a yard, short of the first down. Michigan defense, you could see it on that play, the quickness, Keith. They had it was a big hole by, opened up by the Notre Dame line, which, by the way, is one of the best in the country. But by the time the ball carrier got there, they reacted and closed it up. Lish turns around and gives the ball to somebody besides Ferguson after a while. It might be a startling thing. It might work. Third down and almost two. Ferguson again. No. No, no, no. Ben Needham and Andy Canavino, 83 and 41, are right there. It'll be fourth down and considerable. We remember that play in the Sugar Bowl last year, the same type play on short yardage. Here's... We, we can see Huffman and, and uh, Foley double teaming Greer number 95, but the linebacker filled the hole and stopped the play for no gain. If you use two on Greer, the linebackers are automatically free. Fourth and a yard and a half. They'll go. This the throw. Gets it off. That's a good to Mastak. First down. And he rims the ball inside the Michigan 20 for the 18. So he, Lish ducks the charge and gets it off. Give credit to Lish. He, the receivers were covered on this particular, at the time he wanted to throw. You can watch the fake. He sets up. He has to move a little bit. He keeps his poise. As Sipkins, the linebacker, had flexed. He was clawing at his foot. And then Bastic makes a beautiful catch, controls the ball for the first down. Ferguson. 
Penalty flag. Ball is very close to the 17-yard line as Ferguson dives in. A penalty flag goes right in on it. Here's another look at Sim Simpkins on the last play while we're waiting for the penalty. Look at Simpkins fly, fly through the line and put the pressure on Lish, make him scramble, but Lish showed he had poise, controlled himself, and completed the pass. Penalties against Notre Dame. They're going to back the Irish up. Penalties, turnovers, kill the football momentum, change your game plan, terrify the coach in that particular part of the field where you've got a chance to tie the game up. Offensive holding by the Irish. Notre Dame now in penalties, two times, 30 yards, and both come at very inopportune moments for them. Ty Barber comes in at fullback, replacing Sweeney. The ball is backed up to the 32-yard line, where it is first down. And 25. List to throw. Throws it away. Deep the hit. They had stone in the ball game on that particular play. Ball way over his head. Here's Bill. All right. In the fourth quarter at East Lansing today, Michigan State is rolling over Oregon by the score of 41 to 17. The highlight of that game, incidentally, was a 100-yard kickoff return by Derek Hughes, an all-time MSU record. And in another game today, no trouble for Penn State, 44 to 10, a final over Rutgers. Keith. Hey, Bill. Looks like those Spartans have got something going up there this year. Lish almost dropped the ball. A second. Back at the 40. Keith, when you don't run option plays, watch Simpkins number 40 on the right of your screen. Get the timing. The hole opens up as the center blocks the man over, and the guard turns out, but the back is unable to pick up Simpkins. He uses his quickness and ability to run around the blocker, Forced the quarterback to tuck the ball under and tackle him for a loss. Kites was there, and then Greer came in to put him away. All the way back at the 40, third down, and Notre Dame is now outside field goal range. Simpkins only needs two more tackles. They give him uh, an assist on that one. Ferguson is in motion. This back to throw. Throws complete the mass tack. And Dean gets it back inside the 30, down to about the 28. But that obviously is well short of the first down because they had to go down close to the 7 to get it. Now they may be in reasonable field goal range. On that previous down, Notre Dame used double wing motion to get Michigan out of their blitz. They had to drop them out. Chuck Mayo is in. He has kicked a 40-yarder in the ball game. Now he's going for a 44-yarder. Got enough leg on it. It's good. 448 to play in the first half. And the score now, Michigan 10, Notre Dame 6. Chuck Mayo scoring six points for the Fighting Irish with 40 and 44-yard field goals will now kick it off. And this is a very important series for the Irish defense. It goes to that young freshman. Oh, and he almost got loose on the sidelines. Anthony Carter just electrifying with a 24-yard return. Now, let's see what happens with the Irish defense. Looking ahead to next Saturday, we can't tell you what games are going to be on. We can merely suggest to you, you check your local listings, watch ABC's Monday Night Football. We'll tell you what games will be on. Those are the times for you. It's regional weekend. We're going to pick the best games we can find that are available to us in the respective regions of the country. The ball is at the 25. First down. Notre Dame actually with a six-man front showing to Michigan right now. And the ball is handed off to the tailback, Stanley Edwards. And Edwards gets a couple. They win a six-man front, Keith, I guess, because they've tried the 5-2 and the 4-3 to no, with no success. Very wise, let's put an extra man on the line of scrimmage. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Now they have six instead of five and four. You see the time running remaining in the first half with Michigan on top, 10 to six. D.J. Dickey. 
They line up in the eye, but Clayton will go in motion out of that position behind the quarterback, and Dickey back to throw it. Swings it short to his tailback, Edwards. Edwards just hammered at the 32-yard line. John Hankard, 47, among the first Irishmen to get there. Edwards is dangerous with that football. He looks like he knows where to go with it, got the ability to do it. Dickey still has it. He gets it off short to Doug Marsh, the tight end, and Marsh has the Michigan first down at the 43-yard line. And if you're sitting home with your mouth open and <laughs> wondering if you're truly watching a Michigan football team throw the ball around out of a lot of fancy formations, yes, folks, these are the Wolverines. That may have been Dickey's best pass, most difficult, where he rolled to the left and threw back to the tight end crossing on a play-action pass. One of the toughest things to defend against in football. Here's the story on B.J. so far. Hands the ball off to Lawrence Reed. And Reed, the fullback, on one of his infrequent carries of the ball. Bangs it up across the 45 to beyond the 47. 2.40 to go in the first half. That's what we'll have for you at halftime right there. In years past, you wouldn't worry too much about a Michigan team going 80 yards. And scoring with three minutes to go, but in this team, they just the capable. They're capable. Second down, six, short of the 48. Edwards crosses midfield, gets to the Notre Dame 48, before he is punched back by Bob Crable. It'll be third down and two. Edwards now with 10 carries in the game and 46 yards. Chuck Christian, 85 in for Michigan along with Carter. Clayton comes out on third and short. On the ground so far, Michigan's picked up 125, Notre Dame 43. Dickey. He's going to put it up, gives it away to Edwards instead. Edwards runs away from pursuit. Way back behind the line of scrimmage, turns it up to about midfield, and there he is stopped. Number 61, Bobby Leopold, linebacker, was the man that had the big shot at him and missed it. Looked Dick, like Dickey said, well, I can't, don't think I want to stick my head in that bunch. Uh, Stanley, here, you take it. Third quarter, Iowa giving Oklahoma all they want. I suspect Sooners might have laid it on the ground a few times in that ball game for that score to be like that. They have a new quarterback, uh, Watts. And a lot of new people up in the offensive front. Here's the punt now coming by Virgil. First punt of the ball game for Michigan. At one and a half to go in the first half, and he hangs it up pretty well on the sideline. And out of bounds. So the clock stops at one, two, seven. The play in the first half. Notre Dame gets the ball back. Michigan leads in the game. Number four, 40 yard field goal and a 44 yard three pointer. Ron Simpkins now needs one more tackle to become the all-time leader in that department in Michigan football history as the second half is underway. Three yards deep in the end zone. Carter will come out. He comes bang at the 19-yard line, and here's the starting unit now offensively for the Michigan Wolverines as we go into the second half of play. It'll be B.J. Dickey at quarterback with Edwards the tailback, Reed the fullback. The wide men will be Clayton and Mitchell. Offensive front, Moransky, Becker, Lilja, Arbeznik, Leone, and Marsh. The ball is just short of the 20-yard line. First down, Wolverines. Mitchell and Clayton both come to the left side or the open side of the field. Notre Dame with a six-man front. Ball is given away to the fullback. Reed inside. He gets a couple of yards on brute strength, and that's it. Here are the people who are playing the heavy duty up front for Notre Dame. John Hankard out of Jackson, Michigan, is a junior defensive end. Pat Kramer is a sophomore. Ken Griffith, Kevin Griffith, the tackle, is a sophomore. And Joe Gramke, defensive end, also sophomore. Mike Whittington, uh, linebacker. Bob Crable, the linebacker, is in the middle from Cincinnati. And Bobby Leopold, a senior out of Port Arthur. Carter comes wide to the left side now, and Clayton goes to the right side. Ball is in the middle of the field. It's a double reverse. Ball given to Carter, caught behind the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame read it perfectly and banged him down. Seeky, number 40, was the man who stayed at home, penetrated, and made the play. Keith, let's watch it from the end zone. You're going to see Sit coming from the right corner on safety blitz. 
And how lucky can you be in a defensive call because the play started away from the safety bit. Here's number 40. Slows him up enough for the rest of number 54 Whittington to make the play along with Leopold, number 61. And the ball is moved back to the 18-yard line. Third down and about 11, a little more than 11. And Dick is going to put it up. He goes to the sideline. The pass is caught by Ralph Clayton. He's rolled out of bounds just outside the 26-yard line. That's short of a first down. And once again, Cici is the man to make the play for the Fighting Irish. So on Michigan this, now will have to punt. On this replay, you'll see the out pattern covered very well by number 40. Cici, who had a back problem, wasn't expected to play, recovered enough. Clayton did not make the first down. All right, Virgil's in to do the punting with Waver and uh, Gibbons deep for or Krim deep for Notre Dame, 19 and 34. And the ball's going to go to Waver after 34. And that's punt cover. Lawrence Reed, fullback downfield in a hurry. Number 70 for Michigan is shaken up on the play, but he walks off. He's all right. Just wanted to add to what you said about great punt coverage. It's so important in a game like this for the special teams, the kicking teams to play and give great effort. They are the key to the hidden yardage. There, the Irish offensive backfield with Lish at quarterback. And the ball is just short of the 35. First down, Notre Dame. Michigan leading 10 to 6. Ferguson is still the only man to have carried the ball today for Notre Dame. But lo and behold, Ty Barber on the first play of the second half gets to see the football. And the 185-pound sophomore out of Washington, D.C. punches it out to about the 38-yard line. The offensive front for the Irish. Martinovich, Leon, Scully, Huffman, Foley, Maztec. Let's look in there and see whether or not Mr. Huffman's not in there. It's Larry Hufford out of Trenton, Ohio, who is in. They even left the uh, aliens in the stadium today, didn't they? Lish rolling. Well, he's got a lot of room to run. Got a first down as he decides to make the slide and go down without taking the full blow. And it's going to be a first down for the Irish. Curtis Greer, defensive tackle. Mike Turgovich is the middle guard for Michigan. Dale Kites is the other defensive tackle with Ben Needham playing outside linebacker or defensive end. Mel Owens also outside. Ron Simpkins, uh, who may get himself into the Michigan history book right here. Andy Canavino, inside linebacker. It's first down Notre Dame at their own 48-yard line. This gives to Ferguson. Makes it big. Oh, my goodness, Simpkins. Oh, Simpkins. Or he might have gone. So now Simpkins is in the history book. He has equaled the highest tackle total. This and is he won more. He sets a record. Watch the run by Ferguson. And watch number four, Harden, who is an all-Big Ten safety man, come up and watch the juke right there. What a cut Ferguson made. He cut him back. Braden misses the tackle, and finally Simpkins brings him down. Mastak with a big block to turn in. First down, the ball is at the Michigan 34. Ferguson. Drives to the 25. Got nine yards on that carry. The defensive secondary is Stu Harris, the Wolfman for Michigan. He's an Ohio youngster. Mike Jolly, the senior. Is a defensive halfback. Good one, Mark Bremen. And out of Detroit, Michael Harden, number four. Ball is just short of the 25. Second down, call it two. Ferguson again. He is really popped by Canavino and looked like Curtis Greer, 95 at the bottom and Canavino at the top. He's close to the first down. That's 20 carries in the ball game for Ferguson for 80 yards, and he didn't get his first down. No, Michigan, Keith, is using a uh, stacked defense inside. They seem to just ignore Notre Dame's ability to go wide. They're stacking their strong safety and linebackers in a line right over the ball. All hand wide right. Sweeney back in at fullback. Ferguson. Just comes straight ahead and gets the first down, and he just exploded through there. 
Number 31 was the man that locked him down. Beat Stu Harris. And he got inside the uh, 20, and Simpkins got a piece of the action uh, also. So Simpkins is now the all-time leading tackler for Michigan. First down, Notre Dame at the Michigan 19-yard line. Harris is driving. Michigan leads 10 to 6. That's Callahan in motion. Pitch out to Ferguson. He got a whale of a block to get him around the corner from number 69, John Leon. Simpkins coming in there had closed the hole, and Leon just wiped him out of there. And Ferguson blows the ball down inside the tent. Let's watch the box by Leon. On number 40, Simpkins, all big 10. Watch him cut him. He blocks him high, then falls and cuts him and ties him up for Ferguson to get through and into the secondary for a first down. First down and goal to go. The football is just inside the nine-yard line of Michigan. So Notre Dame bidding to take the lead here in their first possession of the second half. Ball to Ferguson. And he gets to the seventh. Simpkins, number 40, is amongst those at the bottom of the stack. But the primary hit belonged to number 83, Ben Needham. Gets tough running inside against a team like Michigan when you get inside their 20 yard line, and particularly tough when you get inside their 10 because they close inside and with the idea of forcing you wide and throw you for a loss. The big man Detmer has gone out now. He had come in to replace Hollahan, peeks back in for Notre Dame. Second down, goal to go from the seven yard line. Hollahan in motion. Fullback screening. And the big freshman sees the ball for the first time today, and he gets inside the five before Canavino brings him down. That's a very call on Notre Dame's part. Trailing by four points, down inside the ten, second down and seven to give the ball to a freshman, and he bowled over for two yards and kept his hands protecting the football. Did a good job. Third down and goal to go, and the ball is right on the five. into the end zone no incomplete it is Jim Stone who had come in at tailback throwing the running pass intended for Pete Hollihan it did not work so Michigan stiffens now it is fourth down and the Irish kicking team comes in <laughs> It'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt for Chuck Mayle, who has kicked two from 40 and 44. Knocks this one way up in the crowd. It is good. And so we're back to a one-point ball game at 8.21 to go in the third quarter. Michigan 10, Notre Dame. It has just scored on a 32-yard run by quarterback Arch Schleister. And the two-point conversion from Schleister to Jackal was good. And Ohio State with 12.42 to go, leading Minnesota 21-17. Keith? Hey, Bill. Big stunner of the day. 22-21, Wake Forest and Georgia. Deacons, the decision, kick, out of bounds, in the crowd. Michigan ball, first down at their 20. Now there's a little pressure going to mount up on the Michigan offense here to see whether or not they can maintain a little possession because right now, old Mo Minham is wearing white. Well, this is the time that your fans help you. They need to pick the Michigan team up, get them moving some offensively. Notre Dame's defense has improved with the last four possessions of Michigan. Clayton, Mitchell of the wide men. Let's see whether or not the Irish are coming. They had a three-man front. Nope, ball is kept by Dickey, tries to turn it. Nothing doing. He got one yard as Whittington, linebacker number 54, turned that play back inside. And ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football features the Redskins of the Giants. Giants trying to get themselves organized and get rolling. Washington coming off of a big last second, last gasp victory over Detroit last week. And uh, also, we'll tell you on Monday night, Frank. Sure, we'll have the information as to what college games we'll have for you next Saturday. Here's Dickey back to throw on second down and eight. Oh, he threw it right in the hands of Waver. And Waver takes it back to the 14-yard line. And 
It was a bad throw as Dickey tried to force it. Third turnover for Michigan and Notre Dame's cooking deep in Michigan territory. Those are the things you learn, Keith, by only experience. Don't throw the ball when you're in trouble. Scramble and throw it away. Watch him, Dickey, looking to the left. There's first choice, and all of a sudden he says, I'm going to throw the ball to my outlet, and he hits Weymouth 34 right on the numbers. They're very fortunate that Weymouth, who was an offensive player for his first two years at Notre Dame, didn't score. But number 23, Reed, was right there and protected and prevented the touchdown. And Liss rolls out, trying to strike quickly. Goes into the end zone. It's intercepted by Owens. And that's the first turnover for Notre Dame. Mel Owens, outside linebacker, had dropped off in the prevent defense, picked it off, and bang, bang, they swapped the ball. But Michigan gets it back at the two. And we've got 7.29 to play in the third quarter. It's wild at Ann Arbor as the Wolverines lead. School fullback plays linebacker. Watch this now. As Lish, I thought Frank kind of forced the ball himself. Well, he did. Uh, Owens, uh, the number 53, had dropped off to defend. It was a play action pass. Number 86, Matson was the target. But watch him catch it one hand and control it. He play. Michigan in business. First down just outside the two-yard line. Give it to Stanley Edwards. Edwards gets a yard. No more as Notre Dame reads it well. And number 43, Crable right there to make the stop. Irish coach Dan Devine on the headset talking upstairs. Michigan's got one of these telescriper things where I can draw pictures upstairs and, uh, and you can rip it off and read it downstairs. Uh, my first question was whether or not that violated the old Polaroid rule. I used to run pictures up and down the stadium steps. Second down, nine. Ball is written off to the fullback. Reed, Reed out to the five for a couple of more. Just beyond the five. So it'll be third down. It's turnover story. Coaches are terrified of turnovers in this part of the field when they've got the football and also when they're going in the score. Don't give up a chance to put points on the scoreboard. Come away empty headed as handed as tomorrow line. Yeah. Iris got a little hungry on that first yeah. down play from the 14. That's Clayton in motion. And Dickey gives the ball to Edwards. And nothing doing. As Crable once again, little linebacker number 43, found enough room to punch through the offensive blocking and got the man behind the line of scrimmage. And now the Irish are going to get good field position. Dan Devine had told me yesterday that his defense was young, but if they could stay close, they would be improving as the game progressed, and that has been the story. Joe Yato is the defensive coordinator, and George King, the linebacker coach. The two veterans on that staff apparently have done some pretty good work. But out of the end zone, it is almost blocked. He knocks it straight up in the air. Three Irish firing in, forced the bad punt. Notre Dame's ball, first down, Michigan 28. Mark Saya almost got there along with Tom Gibbons of free safety. The punt travel only 23 yards. Here's a look. Watch the men coming from the left of your screen. Gibbons, number 27. Mark Saya. Actually, they knocked each other off the ball. They might have blocked the punt. Give the defense credit for getting the offensive ball back. Good field position. From the 28-yard line, ball is given to Vegas Ferguson. Who else? He gets two to the 26. Canavino, the tackle for Michigan. I'll tell you one thing, that uh, if, in fact, this is one of the better defensive teams of recent years for Michigan and one of the better ones in the country, it is being tested. And it must be pretty good to keep Notre Dame out of the end zone. Maryland, the third quarter, leading Clemson, 9-zip. Duke out to a 28-14 finale over East Carolina. Ferguson again. Well, there's that swarming, head-knocking, stinging defense where you don't get hit by one or two. It's four or five. Well, Notre Dame is having a difficult time calling signals against the Michigan defense. Whatever you call it, you haven't got too much of a chance, but in any event, uh, they first tried to run it over and didn't make it, had to settle for a field goal. They got a position again to score. They threw on first down, is intercepted. Now they've gone back to being conservative. Ferguson has now carried 25 times for 100 yards, and there's a big upset. Wake Forest beating Georgia 22-21. Wow, that's a surprise. Third down. They need a 
about six. Ferguson outside. No, won't get it. Boy, I'll tell you, somebody saw him off over there. He came flashing in there so fast, I really couldn't see who it was, but somebody just flat mailed him. It's Turgovac, 77. Oh, did he come hard. He had some running room. Let's watch it on the replay. It's the pick sweep, and the defensive end for Michigan had busted the play, dropping off. Look at Simpkins take on the linebacker and Trigovich, number 77, making the play. Notre Dame bids for the lead. 39-yard field goal try by Chuck Mayle. It is good, and the Irish are on top. 12 to 10. So, how do you do? Notre Dame with 3.46 to go in the third quarter. Takes the lead by... Rusty Lish, a fighting Irish quarterback, being treated on the sidelines with a parrot sprained left ankle. They put ice on it, they're now retaping it. Michigan has the ball, the crowd roaring as we come to the first play of the fourth quarter with Notre Dame leading 12 10. Michigan's ball, first down at the 20. BJ Dickey to pass, under pressure, gotta go, can't get away, 11 yard line, loss of nine. Notre Dame defense has taken control of the football game. Michigan without a first down in the third quarter. Don Kidd, Jr., led that defensive surge that got the Michigan quarterback. Third quarter stats. They evening up a little bit, Keith. It's been all Notre Dame in this third quarter, as you mentioned. Michigan has not earned the first down. The momentum has shifted, and the Michigan fans are trying to pick up their football team and give them some momentum. Second down and 19 for the Wolverines from their own 11. Edwards, the tailback, breaks it out of there and gets all the way to the 24-yard line. A hard, good block run as Cicci made the tackle. And they are hurrying now with the tape on Lish, the Notre Dame quarterback. Cagle, who would come in to replace him, warming up on the sidelines. Here's the fine blocking by the Michigan front wall. Michigan opened up a beautiful hole, a trap by Orbeznik, knocked out the defensive tackle, blocked him out, and... Edwards made a big game. Third down. Six. <laughs> Dickey wiggles out of there. Oh, my goodness. If Alan Mitchell had been able to knock that Notre Dame man inside and let Dickey get outside, he would have gone 76 yards for a touchdown right there. It is first down, Michigan. They come up with a big offensive play. 27-yard run for the quarterback. What? Nicky. Notre Dame had the play stopped beautifully. He cuts back, uses his speed, turns a potential loss, a punting situation into a first down. Just short of the Notre Dame, 48-yard line. Nicky has carried 11 times for 84 yards. Gives the ball to Edwards, and Stanley Edwards getting some blocking. And he goes down. The ball, he's... Oh. He's going to call him down. He's got to because he was flat of his back when the ball came loose. Ball is at the 38, roughly. Mike Whittington made the stop, number 54. Lish is walking around trying to test that foot to see whether or not he can go back in and play. Kegel, who would back him up, played in reserve four times in 1978, about 15 minutes in relief of Montana. So there isn't much experience back to Lish. While they're measuring to see if it's the first down, did you see the blocking? After that run, how it ignited the Michigan offensive football team. And the first time this quarter, they've had some decent holes. And, of course, uh, Jackson just, uh, Edwards just popped right through. First down. Ball is in between the 38-39 yard hash marks of Notre Dame. Edwards now has... Carried the ball 17 times for 70 yards. Double wide left, top of the screen. Dickey getting pressure from the back. And he's down. At number 92 was pounded along, coming and coming, and I'm sure B.J. Dickey heard the footstep because he turned it up. Otherwise, Joe Gramke was going to plant him. Set in the situation again, B.J. Dickey has played very little for Michigan, as Ricky Leach has played for four years. He got very little experience. He's playing his second ball game as a starter. 
against a fine Notre Dame football team. There's the stat. Reed and Edwards with the deep man on second down and nine. Outside goes Dickey. Over the middle goes the pass, and it is incomplete, and he had Marsh. But that's a hard pass to throw when you're under pressure, running as fast as you can, right-hander running left. He had Marsh open, but he just simply couldn't zero the ball in. Here's Bill Fleming again. Keith, you were talking about B.J. Dickey, another outstanding quarterback performance today. was turned in by Arch Schleister of Ohio State. Look what he did today. All those yards rushing, 239 total. He ran for a touchdown, passed for a touchdown, and perhaps more importantly, passed for the two-point conversion. The Buckeyes won it, 21-17. It is third down for Michigan. Big play right here, third and nine, if they are to keep possession of the ball. They trail. That's 12-10 game. Swing it out to Edwards. Good run by Stanley Edwards, but he is short of the first down as the Irish defenders again regroup and find him. And it's Hankard, number 47, who ran him down. On third down and 10, Notre Dame had dropped into a defend coverage. Michigan tried a screen pass, and it's good for short yards against the defend coverage defense, but they converged on him and kept preventing the first down yardage. We're in the fourth quarter of play with just less than 11 and a half minutes to go in the game. Michigan could not decide whether to punt or try a field goal, and they're confused. Timeout charge to Michigan. So they have two left at 11-19 to go in the game, and Notre Dame leading 12 to 10. Ali Haji Sheik is in to try a 50-yard field goal. It's just a little less than 50. If he misses, Notre Dame's going to get the ball with good field position. And he hooked it to the left. I think he had enough leg in it, but it was hooked left and misses. And the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame will get the ball back with 11-14 to play in the game. So Bo Schimbeckler going for the field goal that would have given him a one-point lead. Tries to get the 50-yarder, doesn't get it, and now the Fighting Irish get the ball back, first down at the 32. Bo debated quite the, at length to decide what to do. Uh, by missing the field goal, he gave up field position. By punting, he would have got... got Lish is out of there. He just couldn't handle it. Ankle is too sore. Cagle is in. Tim Cagle, junior out of Cincinnati, 6'4", 194, number 14. Cagle gives to Ferguson. Vegas comes up to the 35 for a pickup of about two and a half. So Tim Cagle in relief of Rusty Lish, who has a sprained left ankle. Tim, I think Rusty took himself out of there. He's also from Mola High School in Cincinnati. Hollahan to the left. Ferguson has been the workhorse all day for the Irish. Cagle gives it to him again. He blows it over the left side. Oh, fumble! It looks like Michigan may have it. They do. 11 will unwind him down there. Kirkovac getting up. It's Greer, 95, the big tackle who covered the ball. So the Wolverines make a break as they leveled on Ferguson. Let's watch Greer, number 95, George Cross. But let's see who stuck right here. Number 83, Needham. The defensive end, jarred the ball loose, and Greer recovered. What a critical play for Notre Dame, for Michigan. First down at the Irish, 38 for the Wolverines, a 12-10 ball game. The ball is given to Edwards, the tailback, and he is grabbed high and dragged down at the 36 by John Hankard, number 47, defensive left end. This is Michigan's second chance to put some points on the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. Marsh, the tight end, Clayton, the wide man, flanker, Anthony Carter, goes to the split receiver stop at the top of your screen. Second down and eight from the Notre Dame 36. Dickey gives to Edwards, and Edwards is caught from behind. Scott Zedek, number 70, reaching in with that big, strong arm to drag him down. Most critical block sometimes on a high formation play is the weak side. And Zedek came from the left tackle all the way across and made the play from behind. See the time ticking away in the ball game in the fourth quarter. 
Chuck Mayo's four field goals, giving Notre Dame a 12-10 lead. Michigan has been zipped up in the second half by the Irish defense, after dominating the first half. Dickey wants to throw. Down he goes. He is caught from behind and dropped by number 63, Don Kidd. And that's the second time Kidd has made a big play for the Irish. And that takes him right out of field goal range. Virgil is in the punt. Anytime you put, try a play action pass on third and long, you're likely to get a rush, and it's hard to Dave get the pass off. All right, Virgil will try to stick it deep. Keep the Irish bottled up. Low snap. He hits a knuckler. And Michigan's going to be early. Oh, did he get away from him? Yep. How about that? You had four guys back there, and the ball took a squib bounce and went right between them, and it's touched back to the 20 for Notre Dame. Cronin, our technician John Giesel up there bringing you that picture. As we come down now for Notre Dame, first down at their own 20, leading 12 to 10, fourth quarter of play. Tim Cagle gives to Vegas Ferguson. Ferguson gets to the 20. He didn't get much out of it. Maybe a yard before Turgovac 77 wrapped him up. And now Vegas Ferguson has carried 30 times for 112 yards, and his statistics are beginning to have the look of a Southern California tailback. Dan and Vines don't have to be careful going too conservative here. Michigan defense are very effective at crowding against a one-dimension offense. It's not likely to make a first down without throwing the ball. Second down, still about 10. All in motion. Ferguson's got it. And they've got Ferguson behind the line of scrimmage. Boring in is Stu Harris, 31, the Wolfman. And Ferguson is dropped in a yard loss, back near the 18, actually. Cagle had very imposing statistics in high school. Keith, he completed his pass. Way to go, Stone! It was 76 percent. Way to go, Stone! 46 touchdown passes in high school. Ferguson's now carried 31 times in the ball game. Six more, and he'll pass Wayne Bullock for the team record, school record, and the most carries. Cagle gives it again to Ferguson. And Vegas is not going to get the first down. So Michigan should get the ball back. And again, they'll have pretty good field position. But they have not been able to do anything with the football in the second half. And if the kicker doesn't get any more hang time, Notre Dame punter, than he has previously, watch out for Anthony Carter returning. Mike Jolly goes back, and he sets up as a short man. Carter is the deep man. He's the freshman who broke 178 yards last week. Bush could have punt. short and it takes another Notre Dame bounce and Carter has no chance and it's going to roll dead inside the 30 rolling all the way back to the 26 yard line where Michigan will have it first down trailing by two down at the 26 Jolly should have caught that ball it cost Michigan a good 20 odd yards because he didn't cut off that short punt cannot let it roll on this stuff it just keeps on bouncing now they've got 74 yards to travel to get to the Irish goal line they give it a span of which the tailback and did just nothing there. Notre Dame defense is just overwhelming Michigan here in this second half with Crable number 43 getting that tackle help from Bobby Leopold number 61. The college football 7-9 tomorrow with Bill Fleming features those ball games. And there were some good ones. We'll see all the big boys including highlights from tonight's game between UCLA and Purdue in Los Angeles. Crucial situation. Third, second long. They've got to put the ball in the air. Let's see what happens. Second down and 14. Dickey throws to Marsh, the tight end. Marsh gets to the 29, and it'll bring up third and still long as Crable again made the tackle for Notre Dame and 6-15 to play in the ball game. The Irish lead 12-10. The old football coach earns his salary right here when he has to call this play. Third and nine or eight. Six minutes to play. Trailing by two points. He needs the first down. Set it 
gets after him and gets him. Dedek and Hankard. And uh, they sack the Michigan quarterback at the 18-yard line. They bury him. And Michigan will have to kick, and now the Irish will get the ball in good field position. Keith, you recognize what potential that Michigan has on offense. Let's give tremendous credit to the Notre Dame defense for holding Michigan to only two first downs in this half, keeping them backed up in the top segment. That's the third sack. Minus 25 yards. Now Dickey. They peel back for the return as Virgil hits it out. Trim has it. He's dragged down. Penalty flag thrown in there. 35-yard punt. The ball is down at the 45. And let's see what the penalty is. Against Notre Dame. See, the Michigan players applauding. Maybe a clip. Stop holding. Holding. Well, that's a break for Michigan. Notre Dame now has been dinged for about uh, 45 yards in penalties. Three big ones. Michigan's strategy here will be penetrating, blitzing, going after the Notre Dame offense. They recognize that they might not throw the football, so they're going to go after him and try to force a kick immediately or cause a fumble. Mike Corey is in at quarterback number two. Mike Corey, a junior out of Sioux City, Iowa. 6'2", 195. Bastilish has a sprained left ankle. Corey rolls it. Got more foot speed. Throws it. Intercepted. Mike Jolly picks it off. Well, there was a case where he should have run. He had room to run. Give credit to Dan Devine. He knew he wasn't going to make a first down. Right. Running the football. He came out. The only it wasn't his ball. He hurried through the ball. He could have run for a first down. Absolutely. Back to throw the ball. He looks for Marsh. He throws for Marsh, and it's almost intercepted by Steve Cicci. Cicci cutting across in front of Marsh. And I don't think Wengel looked at anybody. He looked Marsh all the way and almost lost it. If he, it's a two-man pattern. It's a wide man hooking and the tight end in the flat. If he'd have waited just a minute, the tight end's open for a nice gain down the field. Through a little bit early, as you mentioned. 1.57 to go in the ball game. Michigan at their own 42. Second down, 10. Notre Dame leading, 12-10. We're sorry, we have just simply lost pictures between Ann Arbor and New York. Back to go, Wengler, he runs out of the pocket. He's got some daylight. He's looking for his first down. Hankard stops him, short of midfield. John Hankard and Bob Crable. Hankard was the man that turned him right into Crable at the 49, 48-yard line, and time is now called by Michigan. They have one timeout remaining. They'll be looking at third down and four. Third and four with only 1.42 to play in the ball game. What are his choices? Two passes, trying to hit the short pass and run, hoping that he can march as not caught, the tight end has not caught any passes this second half. And that's been the turnaround. He's a key target on critical situations. Number 80 in the tight end. The Irish secondary has done a pretty good job on Ralph Clayton today. They have kept him quiet. They have also kept Alan Mitchell and the young freshman wide receiver, Anthony Carter, under control. Bo Beckler on the sidelines right now, talking quietly with his quarterback, John Wengler, who is on in relief of B.J. Dickey. And Dickey unable to move the team in the second half after looking so strong in the first half. The Irish setting up now with Dave Weimer huddling his defensive unit, telling them what the coach wants them to do. At 1.42 to go in the game, it is third down and four for Michigan from their own 48-yard line. Wengler comes up. Big guy looks over the defense, stands up to throw it, hums it to the sidelines. The pass is incomplete. It was a poorly thrown pass. It was thrown too soon to Ralph Clayton. He didn't give Clayton time to take his man inside and then juke him outside. He threw the ball early. Clayton had no chance to catch it. to play in a ball game. We've got some telephone line troubles between Ann Arbor and New York City, and we've had no, no response. 
And we don't know what it is. So we'll just have to tell you by radio what's going on because nobody's telling us what the problem is. It is fourth down. This may be the ball game right here. As Wanger throws it over the ball. Clayton has it. He's got it in for first down. That's the Notre Dame 43 yard line with 134 to play in a ball game. Wangler comes up with a money throw, a clutch throw. Michigan now with only one timeout remaining in a ball game. As soon as the referee turns it loose, the clock starts rolling. Wangler now comes back to throw. He looks at Clayton. He throws it short for Marsh. Marsh has dropped down at the 38-yard line of Notre Dame. Michigan only one timeout remaining. Remember that. They're in a hurry-up offense with the clock running at 1.15. 115 to play and Wengler back to throw. He fakes to the tailback. He throws it over the middle. It is complete to Marsh. And Mara Mitchell is all the way down to the Notre Dame 23-yard line. Mitchell takes the ball high in the air, brings it down. First down, Michigan at the Notre Dame 23. The clock stops while they move the chains. 107 to play in a ball game. And that was a gain of 15 yards on the play. Now we've got to spin the timeout. Michigan got tangled up. They've got a penalty flag thrown. They got mixed up. I don't think they had but 10 people out there. Number 82 kept running back and forth. Norm Betts. They got confused. And that cost them their last timeout. That's too bad. That uh, Bull called the play right at the very end with a substitute. And he was supposed to stay in a tight end on two tight end offense. And he came out and only left six men on the line of scrimmage. It's an automatic penalty. 54 seconds to play in the ball game. 54 seconds to play in the game. Still first down. But they're backed up five yards from the 23. Back to the 28. Notre Dame 12. Michigan 10. They are still, however, a little bit beyond reasonably sure field goal range. First down and 15 from the 28-yard line. And Wangler gives the ball to Stanley Edwards, the tailback. And Edwards runs it down to the 20-yard line, and we're down to 40 seconds to play in the game. Now they are back within field goal range. Michigan hurrying. The pass to the sidelines is incomplete, and that will stop the clock intended for Ralph Clayton. Prim coming up to defend 26 seconds. 26 seconds to play in a ball game. And the clock is stopped on third down and eight. The football is just beyond the Irish 20-yard line, and now Notre Dame calls timeout. The Fighting Irish takes timeout with 26 seconds to play and leading by a score of 12-10, and now Michigan is within reasonable field goal play. 26 seconds to play in the ball game. Now, it shows up there on the scoreboard, one timeout remaining. Mike, is that correct? They have one timeout okay. remaining. I'm wrong. The scoreboard has it. I thought they were out of timeout. All right. Just outside the 20. Third down. Third down and eight. And Wengler hands the ball off to Edwards. And Edwards is sacked. Wrecked up. Back of the 25-yard line. Bob Craven, who has been a sensational performer defensively for the Fighting Irish in the second half. Came roaring through and knocked him down. It is now fourth down. Fourth down. Nine seconds. They're going to wind it down, and now they spend the final timeout. Now they spend it. And they've got six seconds to play. They've got an angle. They've got to go from the hash mark. They had the football down on the 20. Right in the middle right of the field. Right in front of the goal. Brian Virgil, 42 yards. This is a ball game right here. If he makes it, Michigan wins by one. If he misses, Notre Dame wins by two. Now Notre Dame will take a timeout. Put a little more pressure on the Michigan kicker. Let him stand around and think about it a little bit more. Yeah. Ryan Virgil, a senior out of Buchanan, Michigan. Five, nine and a half, 185, and he's going to take some time to think right here. I'd go. All right, we're back with six seconds to play in a ball game. Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. Michigan now will try a 42-yard field goal. Ryan Virgil out of B.J. Dickey's hole. It's 42 yards. He hits it. They win. He misses. They lose. The kick is blocked. The kick is blocked. And Notre Dame with one second remaining. The Irish faithful have come running out onto the field. They're going to mess up everything now. As in their enthusiasm, the kids come pouring out of the end zone. 
The scoreboard shows one second to play in a ball game. It might have been Hankard that blocked it. I saw 47 come firing across. Not sure he was the man. Waver also came pouring in there. It might have been him to get a piece of it. But the point is, it was blocked. Notre Dame has the ball. One second to play in the game. And the Irish have a 12-10 lead and an apparent 12-10 victory. And it was earned by the defense. Absolutely, Keith. They gained a lot of momentum and confidence, and they shut down Michigan, which has a lot of potential on offense in the second half. That's a Waymer coming across right there. He might have deflected it. And it looks like uh, Leopold 61 there and somebody over the top slapped it down. So all they've got to do is take the snap, run out the clock, and win the football game. That'll do it. The Michigan Wolverines, who opened with a 49-7 romp over Northwestern last week, ranked fifth of the nation this week, come up against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame in their opening game of the year. Vegas Ferguson was the workhorse, just hammered and hammered all day. But Michigan brilliant it offensively in the first half, shut down completely in the second half, made some critical mistakes at the most inopportune time. And Notre Dame blocks a 42-yard field goal try to win the ball game 12 to 10. <laughs>